All right, Neves Knives. This is the Bang Gang members live stream. So this is only for the Bang Gang members. Uh, hopefully, I, I believe everybody's going to be able to watch, but only the Bang Gang members should be able to chat. It keeps getting messed up, so we'll see how it goes. So today we are working on the American Blade Works Model 1 and S35VN. We're going to talk um, about diamond plates in different versions and which ones i recommend and um different thicknesses and things and how to calculate it and then we're also going to possibly do a little bit of rust removal and then we're also going to do a little not polishing but refining with the gunny juice after we do a diamond grit finish because we're not going to use the veneve stones on this i could which would be no problem but i don't want to take my s35 to a polish so there's really no reason for me to use the venives now that doesn't mean that i can only get a polish from my venives but since i'm only going to go to about 600 grit anyways i might as well just stick to my diamond plates and then i could refine it if i want to from there with the gunny juice now if i really wanted a polish from the diamond plates not the the venives just the regular diamond plates well then i would go to about 1200 grit and then i would strop with gunny juice and i would be able to go to mirror but i don't want a mirror polish on my s35 s35 in my opinion it can take a polish and with a little bit of bite but in a lot of cases it doesn't in a lot of cases it just gets slick however i notice a lot of times even if it does take some bite after you start using it, the bite goes away really quickly and it just gets slick. So in order for me not to have to constantly strop bite back onto my edge every time I cut with it, I just like putting a, a 600 grit edge on there. It's a nice medium grit edge, has a lot of bite. And 600 or S35 does really good with a 600 grit. It, it gets incredibly sharp. So I'm going to um, talk a little bit of a mixture between this system and the work sharp and because pretty much everything is going to go both ways it doesn't matter if i have a work sharp in front of me the precision guided system or if i have this system right here and forgive my audio i do not have my microphone hooked up for some reason it wouldn't hooked up well it looks like we do have a member that's uh in here or a non-member that's in here so it looks like it's not letting me do that no it's okay um, just so you guys know, this is for members only, so I'll only be responding to the members. It's supposed to only go to the members, but I can't do it right for some reason. But you guys are free to watch and hang out. Um, you guys were supposed to be able to anyways. I was trying to make it to where everybody could watch, but only members could chat. But um, if it winds up going where everybody can chat, it's okay. Next time, I'll just make sure it's for members only. Um, but because I want to advertise this anyways, just so you guys know, the, the join member button is next to the subscribe button if you're on a computer. So if you don't see it on your phone or on an iPad, it's on your computer. And you could join the membership and then you'll get these too. So I guess everybody's going to get this version, but just know that these are supposed to only be for the members. But I guess everybody can, can join to today. Them? You guys can watch. We always have them available to watch everyone. They're all like, I'm going to leave. You guys don't no, have to leave. You don't leave. have to leave. No, you don't have to leave. <laughs> you don't no, have to leave at no all. it's open for everybody to watch. It's just. It always is. The point is right now for me to advertise it so everybody can watch. So so then every so people will join for the ones that they can't hey, watch you know what i new, mean we got a new oh, Kershaw, james, james Strop. awesome man thank you for joining your man. last I name kind of sounds like Strop. yeah you know? i like it i, I like, like it. it all right so um one thing i want to talk about really quick before we get into this if you have a workshop or this system you need to learn how to calculate between stones so and this i guess boils down to if you have the workshop and you got the aftermarket attachments. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, look for my WorkSharp aftermarket attachments video. You'll see the WorkSharp precision guided system with a whole bunch of attachments around it. Now I've done two of those. So one of them only has a couple attachments around it, but the big, the most recent one has lots of attachments around it, like 10, 12 different attachments. And that's the one you wanna watch because you can turn your WorkSharp slowly but surely into a really good system. Or you could just buy a couple aftermarket parts for it and really make it 
really good because that gives you the ability to have any stone you want to sharpen on. So if you do want to sharpen on the Veneve stones or whatever stones, you can. Yeah, baby. Um, when are you? Bro they want to know when the knife sale is. Right after this. I, all I have to do is finish putting in timestamps, and it's going up. It's right now. It's just ready for me to click uh, go live or, you know, upload. It's already uploaded. It's ready to go. All I have to do is finish putting the timestamps in. So as soon as this is over, it'll take me about 30 minutes to finish the timestamps, and then it'll be up. So make sure you guys are watching out for that because um, it'll be going up really quickly after we're done with this. Can I ask you a quick question yes. just because I'm trying to look at something? How do I see a live in the studio? Alive in the studio? Yeah. You have to go to, where does the video go like this? And then right up here, there's live right there. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, one thing you have to calculate, so if you do have the other system, if you have the workshop and you have the aftermarket parts, or this system or any system where you can switch stones, you need to be able to calculate if you switch stones because the thickness is different, right? So if I swap stones, my angle is going to be all off. Now with this system, I figured out that what I do is I set it on 12. There's a 12 right there. I set it on 12. There's a gear right here. And what this does is this moves this up and down. And that's for me to basically change stones. So if I leave it on 12 from my regular diamond plates, which these are four millimeters thick, right? And then I switch to this, which is 12 meters, th 12 millimeters thick. All I do is I just go from here and I just go all the way up to the top, which is, uh, I think 16. Um, I'm not, I forget the measurements on these, but regardless, I just go from 12 to 16 and that's the difference between this. So my angle is still identical. Whoa, we got a donation. We do. Can you say his name right? Denise, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. <laughs> And um, then, thank uh, you for the two crackers, man. There's also a question. I, I don't know it, um, if you said it or not, before or not, but is the knife sale going up for members first? No, it's going up for everybody. Everybody's <laughs> okay, going to have the ability. I didn't know that was like a... If, uh, no, no. The, no my do, knife sale is going up for Patreons first, then to the public. This is not my... These are not my knives. These are somebody else's knife collection. There's a lot of them. I, I forget how many there is, but there's a lot. Oh, you're, Three. you have knives you're selling, and those are going to... My own knives are going up to the patrons first, but that's not going to be till that's later. That's not this. That's not this. Got no, it. this is somebody else's knives. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to throw on my Atoma 140. That's what I'm going to start with. This is very aggressive. Now, this is actually my brand new one, so I'm not going to use this, but I wanted to pull this out because I wanted to show you guys something. Be careful, or not be careful, but be cognitive of when you order these, there's different ones. So this is an Atoma too, but watch this when I turn to the side. This is almost as thick as a Veneve. See that? Now, this makes it where you can strip this off and replace it. You know, so depending on if you want to get diamond plates, even my big stones, my big plates have replaceable tops so i can strip this off and there's a i can replace it but anyways i'm gonna start with my atoma but i'm gonna start with my old one so this is my new atoma 140 i'm gonna put that over here to the side because that is for when i wear this one out you most likely would take a very long time to wear one out me i wear them out pretty quick so um this is probably about 300 grit now because i've used it so much now this is an atoma 400 yeah, it's getting close to, I mean, I've wore it down pretty good. But I'm not going to use my Veneves. But if I wanted to, I still should calculate the difference. So I always leave this on 12 for me personally when I use my diamond plates. Like I said, these are 4 millimeters thick. Veneves are uh, usually uh, 12. Yes, baby. Um, wait, can you... Tell me when you're in a spot where you're not going to move a lot because I just need to use this really quick. What do you mean? This. I just need to touch. I need to okay. just, I'm just saying. All right. So I'm going to put this in here. But first, I'm going to put a little layer of tape on it. Now, the tape I'm going to use is Captain Tape. You can use whatever tape you want. I like Captain Tape. Um, this is the stuff I talk about when I say that if you want to freehand sharpen and you want to do my thumb trick where you put a where you put the measurement on your thumb 
and you put the spine of the blade on that measurement, then you can hold the same angle if you want to do that. This tape works really well because the stones do not wear it off. So you don't have to worry about the stone scratching through it. Now, if you put it on a blade and you use a diamond plate on it, yeah, it can scratch it off, but it doesn't do it on your fingers. But I'm going to use just a little strip of this just to protect the blade on the spine. I'll grab a little piece of it. So I'm gonna just lay this right here like this. Yeah. Oh, uh, Steve Yotter says, where can I pick up a sharpener like that? This one right here. So I, if you go look up my uh, my my uh, T S Prof Blitz T S P R O F Blitz. I did a video on it in the description. There's a link to multiple different versions. This one's the Blitz 360 now. So you but there's different ones. So the Blitz 360 is going to be probably the most affordable because these are not cheap. Now, if you want to get a more affordable option that still gives you incredible results and is easy to use, you might want to get the KME. Now, if you want to go more budget than that, then you're going to talk about the, the Lansky or the WorkSharp with attachments. But I do recommend the KME if you got the $200 to spend. You'll get stones and everything with it. I fixed it for chat. Fix the chat? Did you know you could do this? Do what? Did, you're live through studio and you can see like all the analytics like your chat rate and your views well i know i can go live through studio no like you can watch it through here oh that's cool right okay so now i'm gonna check my angle really quick on this because i am looking for for this system it's a little different than maybe what you would do with the kme or the workshop with the workshop you can just adjust it um but with this right here i have my my settings over here if you watch my full review on this system i break down how to use it and all the little things um so right now it is set on 13 degrees so when i set this on here now i need to calculate the difference with my little angle guide hang on one second just zeroing it out so i am at 5.9 so that would be what uh about 18 19 degrees it's almost the same over here yeah similar enough so what i'm going to do is i'm going to lower my angle now because i want to get now i'm at uh, about uh, 11 so my angle, just really quick, we're almost done with this, uh, 5.8, so I'm at almost 17. I'm just going to raise it just a little tiny bit. That should be about 17. <clears throat> now, this is going to go pretty quick, but this is going to be because what I really want to talk about here, because this is one of the most common questions I get is, how do I not mess up my tip? Because it is difficult. It can be very frustrating doing the tips. Tips are easier freehanding than they are on systems. Let really? me tell you. Yeah. Well, when you have belly. When you have belly. If it's uh, Warren Cliff, then no. Uh, but when you have belly, getting around this corner and getting the tip, it can be difficult. Now, let me just tell you. The one thing you want to do, if you want a good tip, there's one, one critical thing. And it's so massive. You cannot allow this to happen. Do not allow your stone to get to here and go like this. Watch my stone very carefully. Don't let it go like that. If it tilts right there, you're going to round your tip off. Because your angle's different when you do that. Right, right? But, you don't, but it happens by accident. What happens is you go like this and then it falls. Or you go like this. Like It's okay to go right here like this. But don't let it go like that. Because if it does that, it literally, what it does is it <laughs> nicks the tip and it takes yeah. forever to get that out. Like just doing it once takes like five minutes to get it out. So if you do it twice, now you're talking about 10, 15 minutes of, you know, like it just, you do it three or four times, you're going to be sitting there all day trying to get the tip done. So what you want to do is just avoid that at all costs. Don't do it once. So 
be very cautious when you get to the tip with your stone. In fact, what I like to do is I just don't even fuck around with going past the like the, the beginning of the stone. So picture the rod is the middle of the stone, right? I don't let the tip go past the rod. Now, if I ever do, it's because I'm very calculated with what I'm doing. I'm not, like, I'm literally focused on my pressure, focused how I'm applying pressure to this side of the stone, not this side, because if I apply it to this side, it'll fall off for sure. But if I'm holding pressure to this side, I can prevent it from falling off. But when you get to the tip, you can watch the edge of the stone hitting the tip. So if I'm going across my knife, I'm going to watch. I'm, I'm, my eyes are focused in this direction right now. I'm literally like this with my head. And I'm focusing and I'm watching the stone go all the way to the tip. Let me zoom in. I'm watching the stone go all the way to the tip right there. So I can tell it's hitting. Now what you'll see sometimes is you'll see a little tiny piece of metal that's not getting hit at the tip. That's okay. Leave it. Because what will happen is, is that part of the tip will be a little tiny bit higher than the rest of the edge and it will get hit. It will get hit. It just might not get hit the first few swipes or whatever. So just let it be. Let your stone just go right to the tip and then back. Don't, don't let it go past. Not even halfway past. Like just let this edge of the stone go past the tip and then come back. So if it goes halfway past, does that like it'll tilt? In inherently, it'll tilt even yep. if you think it's not. Unless if you're literally focused on it and applying pressure to this side of it. So if you're just holding your stone you're back here how you're supposed to, it will inevitably go off the stone or go off the edge, and it will do what I'm saying will mess up your tip. So like right now, I'm not allowing. Like if you watch my tip, I'm barely allowing the stone to even go past the tip something over here. You're almost out of frame with your knife. Did you zoom back out? There you go. There you go. Now everybody's going to make the mistake, especially if you're rushing, you're going to make the mistake by letting it go too far past. Don't do that. And then at the end, I'm going to show you guys a trick on another way to like if you did do it once or you know if the tip's just not perfect you know in the end maybe you didn't do it maybe you did but i'm going to show you a little trick on how you can kind of blend the tip in i'm also if you notice you can hold it by by this a lot of times i like to hold it right here because now i can manipulate Watch this, how it's going right here. Now it's going down the belly. So I'm actually tilting it myself. So I'm following, letting the stone lay flat on the edge. It's flat on the edge right now. And I'm like focused on it being flat. So when it gets to here, where the belly is right here, I'm actually letting the stone's flatness follow that edge. And back. Sometimes you can feel a little better if you put two hands on it. You can really feel how the stone is laying flat on the edge and following it. But when you hold it right here, what happens is, is you don't have as much control over it. Now, there's times when that's okay, when that's cool. Just make sure you don't let it go past that tip because what will happen is you have no control right here on the ball. So when you hit that, it will go off. So that's why holding it here, you can have a little bit more control over it versus holding it here. But, you know, um, depending on what type of rod you have and the system you have, you have to figure out where allows you to have the most control. Now, one thing I'm focused on, or go ahead, baby, what? Um, do you have a discount code for the TS Prof on Amazon? Okay, so I don't recommend using it. I, I got rid of it because uh, of the Russia thing. I, I wound up getting all the affiliates from Russia before that, but I can't. I don't know what's going on with that shit, so I just deleted it. So if you order from the the links I do have, they'll work. They're, they're from the U.S. The, the system is in the U.S. already. The, Are my, they on all of your videos? No, but they're on a lot of them. They're on a lot of them. If you see TS Prof, 
um, like 360 or TS Prof, this or that. Um, if you can get to the chat, you can link it right now for them if you want. Well, um, Blades linked the Amazon link, but where is yours from? Mine's from mine's from Amazon. I got the Amazon ones. So it's not a di oh, so it's just the link is how. Yeah, okay. I, I said I don't have a discount code because gotcha. you got to understand like that's that's it that's going. If I have a discount code, it's going directly to Russia to the company. I can't say whether or not your your system will show up. So I just deleted it because I'm not going to be affiliated with that. But I am affiliated with the Amazon purchase because they already have it. So they'll send it to you. That way, you know, I can't get you a discount code, but I can reassure that you'll get the system because it's already here. Right. Let me look on a video and grab it. Yeah, go and grab the 360 specifically. So what I'm doing right now to get to the tip, I'm actually, I'm letting the stone go like this. And then once I get to here, I'm letting it follow and letting it angle itself. Watch, watch my stone really carefully. I'm letting it angle. This is being dramatic right now, what I'm doing, but that's what I'm doing. I'm doing that just more slightly, just like that. So I'm letting it tilt, but I'm not letting it go past the tip. I'm just letting the edge of it go past because as long as I angle it like this, like right now, if I turn the, the stone to the side or at an angle like this, the stone is hitting the edge still. I'm still sharpening. I'm just sharpening with the corner. So when I do that and I like apply a little bit of pressure at an angle, I'm guaranteed to hit the tip. I just don't want to go past it because then what will happen is then I tilt. Now, there's going to be times where you might want to use the closest part of the middle of the stone, you just never want to go past. Think of an invisible line in the middle of the stone. Maybe even a little bit um, to, to, the, to the better side, you know, of that line. Don't go past that. So stay on the good side of that line. Yeah, um, you have two links underneath where it says TS Prof. Is that it? Well, you just grabbing a new one? No, I, I'm just asking. You can I grab a new one. link, and I'm... Is that the right one? Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, these are not cheap, but in my opinion, they are well worth it. And you can get all different kinds of stones, and they're six-inch stones. Let me pull this out a little bit so you guys can see more of what I'm doing. But just to be clear, there's no discount for them. No, there's okay. no dis I, I can't get a discount. Okay. The disc the, the affiliate that I did have with TS Prof is I, I discontinued it because of what's going on in Russia. I can't. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> It's nothing, you know, bad from them or from us. I just don't want to, you guys oh, order oh. something and not get it. Okay, maybe I can't get that link from here right now. Why? Because it, it's not, just not letting me copy it the way that you have it on there. So why don't you grab a new one? I will. I could do it from there. And then sometimes, you see what I'm doing right now? I'm doing single passes like this. But what I'm doing is once I get to a certain point, I'm lifting off. I'm not, I'm applying pressure down lightly, very lightly. But what I'm doing is once I get to that certain point, before I hit the middle, I lift off. Lift off, lift off, lift off, lift off. So I'm just, I'm just trying to get a little part of the tip a little bit without letting it roll over. Now, I'm going to show you guys that trick here in a second, a little tippity tip that can help you with getting the tippity tip. Okay, it's called Vosteed what? Vosteed. What's it, or no, what's it called? TS Prof Blitz. TS, where did I get that from? Did you just say something? I ha I'm affiliated with uh, Vosteed. Oh, I think I was just on a video. So, now I'm going to work this side really quick. Then we're going to go to the next stone. But we're not going to use the Atomas. We're going to use a different diamond plate after this. 
So when I'm doing like this direction, I'm doing just the exact opposite. So as I'm going across, now I am, once I get to here to the belly, I'm allowing it to do that tilt thing where it tilts. See right here, it's starting to tilt, but I'm not, I'm only letting the edge go past the tip a little bit. And now there's another thing, like once you get comfortable, you'll be able to go like this. And then once you get to the tip, push straight up, you can do that too. But you know, you're just, you're at a certain point to where you're not gonna let the stone fall off. So it's okay. Because like, if I'm right here, I can push straight up like that. And that'll get the tip really good. But I have to blend that in now. Yeah, baby. Um, <clears throat> Sid one says, Jared, I'm getting a few new Beneath stones. Should I rebuy the Phoenix or should I go for the Dragon series? If you got the money, get the Dragon. You you will be happier with the Dragon series. One, they don't load up as fast. They last so much longer. Um, it seems like when like with when I had the the Phoenix, I felt like I was constantly having to condition them far more often than I do the dragons. And I also heard that from multiple other people as well. Now, if you can't afford the dragons and the phoenixes are great, the only real difference is thickness in resin. It, well, resin bonded diamond. So the, I think it's two millimeter, the, dra the dragon series and the phoenixes are one millimeter thick. Now that one millimeter will last a long time, but imagine how long a phoenix will last Versus if it's double as thick, you know, a Phoenix already lasts a long time. So if you have the dragon, man, it's going to last you a long, long time. I mean, I do a lot of sharpenings and mine hardly look touched. Sid one said that TS Prof will still be available in major US and EU stores yep. for now. <laughs> yep. That's what I mean. That's why I'm saying like, that's the only ones I link are the ones that I know are already in the US. I feel bad for um, companies like that where... Well, I, mean, I know one even contacted me and was like, you know, we don't like what's going on. Like, we yeah. have nothing, to, there's nothing we can do. You know, yeah. we hate it too. And I just feel bad for private entities that have nothing to I do mean. with it. That's what I mean, yeah. people like you and everyone else kind of have no choice but to not associate. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I feel bad, you know, and like they're trying to still work with us and do things but they know like it's a complicated situation that they don't like either so but you know and they're just people like just trying to make products and stuff and well, i know it people would be like if your country all of a sudden no it's different it's different invaded be, somewhere. it's different well maybe not it's different because they have a communist government taking I'm their saying money if just pretend if your country was oh like as that. a personal thing yeah yes. like as in, a you, in thing, like yes. your country just did something you don't have control over it no for sure yeah as a control thing no that sucks because you don't have any control over what your government does but they the problem with them is the government actually takes their part of their profits and uses it yeah. what gr uh sorry craig hamilton says what grit does crew wear like crew wear likes any grit that's the beautiful thing about crew wear and that's why I love Crewwear so much. Crewwear recommendation. No, no, it doesn't matter. That's that's the beautiful thing with really? Crewwear. It doesn't matter. But like, if you were sharpening crew Crewwear, what grit would you does. start with? Oh, I would start with a coarse grit. I mean, you start with a coarse grit, but your finishing grit can be whatever you want. Like, so you would start with like anywhere, anything between one hundred and fifty and three hundred grit, but you can finish with. 400 grit you can finish with 600 grit you can finish with a thousand grit you can finish with 10,000 grit it doesn't matter there's not one that makes the knife better it just depends on what you want if you want a polished edge it takes a great polish if you want a toothy edge then four but between four and 600 grit's great if you want a fine edge then anywhere between a thousand and 1500 grit is great it just depends on what you want but eat any one that you want crewwear takes it it does incredible um, what kind of tape <coughs> are you using to that's, protect the knife? That's Captain tape. So you can use painter's tape as well. I like Captain tape because it I can use it on my fingers if I want to. I don't use it a lot when I go across the stones, but sometimes if you guys watch my freehand sharpening, sometimes I let my fingers drag across the stone a lot. And when I do that, if I'm doing a lot of knives in a row, then it can start wearing your fingers. It you can start... A thimble. Right, 
but the thimble <laughs> will mess up my stone. So what I do is what? you put the, you use the cap. Well, my diamonds, the captain tape. Um, it it you can wrap it around your fingers and it doesn't affect it. Oh man, I never thought about this. Sid, this is not knife related, but Sid said, "Yeah, business is rough in Russia right now. Having to wrap." Rely on crypto and stuff. If you're older and don't know that stuff, they're basically effed. I never thought about that with their financial, like their national uh, bank situation. Like. So what they're doing right now, I know somebody who tried to purchase a, a, a Russian knife from a Russian company, and they're not accepting regular PayPal or yeah. anything like that unless if you're willing to pay basically double because the, the their government's going to take half of it. So... You can do it in like crypto or other ways to where it's cash. Um, I forget the system they, they were wanting because um, I didn't do it. But there was some other way they wanted you to make the payment. And if you did that, then you could pay the regular price. All right. So now I'm going to deburr. But the way I'm going to deburr is I like to deburr in a reverse pass, not a forward pass. So I like to just go like that. They're converting the to the Chinese financial system, apparently. What's that? They're converting to the Chinese financial I'm system. I'm sure they are. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> it's very terrifying. That's why uh, a lot of people are up in arms with uh, us doing anything with both of them. And I understand it. All right. So now we're ready to go to the next stone. So what I'm doing is I'm switching to my, technically they're my TS Prof stones, but this couldn't be any diamond stone, even if it was Venise. I'm just not, my next Venise stone would be my 400 instead of using that. I'm just, because these ones are the same size and everything. I don't have to change anything. Um, this one's my extra course, which just so you guys know, the TS Prof diamond stones are on a F rating remember that extra course it's not really extra course it's more like a i don't know like a medium grip so if it says 150 that's an f rating so their f rating f 150 is more like three four hundred grit something like that maybe even 500 grit i forget exactly what it is but it's not 150 grit it says F-150 on there, but it's not 150 grit. It's an F rating. F rating is different. That is basically Russia's way of translation of grit, which is completely different than ours. Just like my 2,000, or sorry, my 1,200 grit Venive is 5,000 grit. That 1,200 is 5,000. Go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to show you this really quick, and also that it's relevant to the chat as well. On this iPad and on a lot of my devices, it keeps auto choosing 480p. I know for the it's quality. weird, right? Yeah. So if you guys are ever watching and have bad quality, show them. Put it on the thing. My brain doesn't know which way to move. I know. Ah. No, okay. It. No, it's fine. Right here. Yeah, but you can hit up in the corner to change your quality to a. Uh... Let them see it. They can't. See. Just hold it right there. I was gonna zoom in. Okay, uh -huh. yeah, it's see, it's defaulting at 480p, and that might have to do with the internet. But connection, just so you guys but... know, you guys can switch the quality. If the quality isn't good, you guys can switch the quality to a better quality. You just yeah. hit that little tab, and then you use a higher picture, nice quality, and it'll it'll make it like 1080p or whatever your data can handle. It'll tell you, oh, if you choose higher quality, it's going to use more data. But if you're on Wi-Fi. Uh, the most it would use maybe is a little more bandwidth, but nothing that'll cost you more or anything like that. Right. If you're on cellular data, in, ca that, in that case, you might want to worry about it. But All right, so now I switched to, let me zoom out. I switched to my extra course F-150, which is like three, 400 grit. So anytime you work one spot, like, say if I'm working right here, I have to blend that. If I work up here like this, I have to blend it. So anytime I work one area, I have to do complete passes. Now, you don't have to go back and forth. You could just go forward like this, lift off. I like to go back and forth because it gets it done twice as fast. But make sure you do that because this is blending in that grip pattern and making it all even because when you do one spot you're making that spot lower than the other spots and that's where you'll see facets facets are where 
you basically can see where different angles were sharpened or where you see a grip pattern going one direction while a, uh, another grip pattern goes another direction. You want the grip pattern to all go the same direction, which I personally want all my grit to go at an angle up the edge. So if this is my edge, I want all my grip pattern to go like this. Now, factory edges usually go up and down like that. The reason why is because they're done on a belt system. The belt's rolling and it hits the edge going straight down. But you can do it up and down. It's not that big of a deal which one you do, but I'm just saying I personally like a little I like a little angle to mine, kind of like a, a saw blade, right? Um, some saw blades have uh, teeth that go straight up and down, but some of them have it at an angle, and I personally uh, prefer my teeth to go at an angle on my edges. What does it matter? I don't know. I see them on an angle usually. Well, from my edges, not from oh, factory. I from guess because I live with you. And down. <laughs> but um, but it, it, like I think of it as when I cut, I cut like this, right? On, let me go slower. Mm. I cut like this, so I want the teeth to always be going towards the thing it's cutting. Oh my gosh, that's that what makes I. So much that's sense. why. That's why I look through it like that. Think about it like that. I never thought about that. I'd be curious to know on like a microscopic level if it actually makes a difference. Or well, not. it's supposed to, just like a saw blade. They do saw blades like that for a reason, for different types of materials depending on what you're cutting. But just the teeth on an edge, though, because it's still an edge. Either way. Well, obviously going straight up and down is still going to work. I'm just curious to know like on a microscopic level if there would be some sort of difference to the wear of the knife or, you know, like if you could zoom in and actually watch the teeth while they're cutting, like what it would do to the knife. Yeah. All right. So I'm ready to flip it looks like. I have a burr from heel to tip. And I'm going to show you guys that trick here in one second. You got tricks? Got tricks. Can you guys see? Now, the, the little trick I'm going to show you guys is more so going to be more beneficial if you're doing a polish. Um, i got to hit this this way. You guys see? But the reason why you would do it is if you're having issues in certain areas and you're, you have facets or... Maybe your tip isn't looking as good as you would like. This little trick can help you blend it in. Now, it's going to be a trick you're going to want to start off early. You're not going to want to do it on your just your last stone. Like if you can, if you're doing a, a polish, you're usually using a few, quite a few stones. You know, you're not just doing three stones. Hey, Brian Gilbert, thank you for the five bones, man. Oh, man, the thank second you. I walk away, yeah, yeah, that's what you get. The freaking second I walk away. So is that a donation because I left? It probably was. <laughs> yeah, she's gone. But basically what it is, is say I'm trying to blend in the edge a little bit, especially like the tip area. You can lay the, the stone flat down just like this. Now, like I said, this is more so for polish, right? But you would do this with your last two stones or something, right? But what you can do is you can take and... Um, your stone just lay it flat and just drag it like that and go back and forth. So what I'm doing is I'm allowing this part of the stone to just hit that edge right there. And I'm just letting it go back and forth like that. And you can do that. And that's, like I said, that's more so for the polish. And it'll help, really help you uh, flatten out all those facets and line everything up and like say if you did have a little spot in the tip that wasn't getting hit or that could be a little bit better and it, or maybe the polish isn't hitting that area is good that will help massively um 
How long are you looking for a burr? I think you said in the higher grits, the neat parentheses, the need, it's not so important anymore. So, okay, so it depends. Now, you want to create a burr with every stone for the most part. Now, once you've already created a burr through all your stones and your two, your last two finishing stones, which are going to be your polishing stone, no, it's not that big of a deal. But, but, this is why I always say chase the grit. The grit is the most important part. Because if you can watch the grit go from the top of the bevel all the way down to the very apex, then you know you already have a burr. Like right now, I already know I have a burr. I don't even have to think about it. I can see I have a burr. Even without flipping it, I can see. Because I'm chasing the grit. I'm following the grit pattern from the top of the bevel to the very um, tip of the edge. Now, when I get to my final finishing stones, one, I already know my angle's already there because I've already done all the work from my first stone. Starting with my first stone, I already had a burr. So my next stones are basically just changing the finish. By the time I get to my polishing stone, I'm, I'm just changing the finish on the edge. You know, because I've already created my apex. I already know this stone is laying from the top of the edge bevel all the way to the very apex and it's hitting the whole thing. So me just changing the finish is going to create a burr. But that's only if I've done all the work with the first stone. That's why I always say the first stone is the most important stone. All the other stones don't even matter. It's the first stone that matters. If you don't do everything with the first stone, then it's just going to be trouble going forward. That's why. First stone, most important. All the other stones will go by like, a, like, like nothing. Now I'm going to switch to my finishing stone. Sorry, that was an aggressive poke. <laughs> yeah, it was. What's up? Um, will a nimble take a mirror polished edge? Will a nimble? Like, I, I'm guessing it's the name of a knife. M oh, the M390. M390. Yeah, it is M390. Yeah, that's M390 more so. Like, usually M390 does good with a polish. This, the thing is, is that sometimes when you get soft M390, it it doesn't take the best polish like that's the only that's the difference and you're gonna see that with any steel any steel it, you know even steels that take a good polish you know if they have a softer heat treat they're not going to take as good of a polish as if they had a, a, a higher hrc uh heat treat so m390 usually does pretty good now there are times though where you're going to find that your M390 is pretty soft and it doesn't, you know, do as good. Now, right now, I'm just holding my, my stone at an angle and kind of just like doing a little scrub motion right here. Not with no pressure because I don't want it to take any other... Anytime you do something like that, always make sure you don't do too much. You know, you just do a little bit and then go back and do some full swipes because you want to blend it in. Otherwise, you'll take more steel out of an area than the rest. Yeah, baby. So I think sometimes when like I'm watching a video on sharpening or even sitting here in person, it's really hard to tell how hard you're pushing down uh, in, mm -hmm. through a video because like the sound of the um, stone on the knife makes it sound like you're like whoosh, whoosh, like pushing in really hard. Yeah, I'm not putting any pressure. I'm like like the literally stone, the weight of the stone. The weight right? of the stone and maybe a little bit more. So. In, but re in reverse, if you were holding your knife on a hand, like if you're hand sharpening, then is it the weight of the knife that you're putting down, basically? Yeah, but I'm putting a little bit of pressure. It just depends. Like if I, 
Mo usually the way you look at it is you don't want to put pressure because the diamonds are already cutting and all you're doing is wearing your diamonds more. The diamonds are already doing work. However, pressure does make it go faster. So if you wanted to hog off a lot of steel, then yes, pressure does equal more steel removal. However, the problem with it is that you are less likely to hold your angle accurate you're more likely to do damage you're more likely to just to do weird things so it's not good like tip damage like tip damage like uh not holding your angle accurately like lowering your angle like just doing things that are not productive and it winds up backfiring for you that's why light pressure little tiny bit but not much like the stone it, you could literally just use the stone pressure but I like to add a little bit more, but I can control it. So if you can't control it, then don't do it. That's basically the way I look at it. If you can control it, do it. But if you can't control it, then don't do it. Kind of like, kind of like how fast can you ride a bike, right? If I was going to ask you, how fast can you ride a bike? You know, well, you can go as fast as you can control, as fast as you are comfortable with. Now, pressure though, it does. The more pressure you use, the more faster it the faster it does wear out diamonds, but you're already wearing them out to some extent anyway. So as long as you're not like really just putting crazy pressure, then you're fine putting a little bit. All right, we are basically done, but I'm gonna um, do a burr removal then strop. I want to... Um, tell you guys though if i was doing this at if i wanted to put a polish and um i wanted to do it from diamonds well i this wouldn't be my finishing stone i would go all the way up to like my thousand grit of these pl plates and then i would pop then i would strop because then coming off the strop it would give me a polished finish i don't want a polished finish with this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a quick burr removal so my burr is on this side now, and I'm going to do a reverse pass very lightly. When you do burr removals, burr removals are no pressure. And the reason why is because you're not looking to create another burr on the other side. You're looking to basically snag the burr's teeth off. So like right now, I'm just very lightly letting the stone pressure, that's it. If Sometimes I don't even let the whole stone pressure do it. And I'm basically just letting, you can hear the teeth ripping off right now. Now I'm going to go to this side. The teeth are back on this side because some teeth do go back and forth. Like if this is the burr, it'll go back and forth. But my, my goal is to rip them off. So the ones that do um, fold back and forth, I want them to break off or get ripped off. And they eventually will. Now when they're fatigued enough, the... The strop will, will help that too. So like right now I do have still some burr. So this tells me something too, by the way. This tells me that this S35 probably isn't like a really high HRC, which a lot of it isn't, right? But my 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 statement or me saying that isn't completely towards this S35. It's telling you something for all steels. So this is something you'll notice. If you've done a lot of M390, you'll kind of have the feel for what good heat treated m390 how it deburrs and you'll be able to tell like oh it usually deburrs you know within just a, a couple passes very lightly or whatever now if that burr keeps fucking going back and forth you might know well that steel is uh it, or it's pretty soft maybe it has a lower hrc now some steels like s110v that fucking burr will go back and forth on you for days so that's why you don't do the stone trick that I'm doing right now. You don't even do it. it do what you do is you go from having a burr, you barely fatigue it, you go do a couple passes back and forth, it's not going to be gone. It will still be there. Then you strop. The strop will remove the burr better than the plate. That's with S110B pretty much specifically to that steel. That steel, uh, has, you. I mean, it's easy to remove the burr if you do it correctly. It's a bitch to remove the burr if you don't know. Um, yeah. Question. Um, is there any benefit? I know there is, but for using soapy water on the stone like you do in hand sharpening, or would it just make a mess? For veneer stones, you need 
you, know, you should use soapy water. And the reason why is because it stops the, um, the steel from clogging up the stone. But for regular diamond plates, I drew them dry. That's why I do them dry because I don't want the mess. I don't want my, because, you know, when you're holding like this, your fingers start getting soggy and everything. Fucking, it's so much easier to just do them dry. However, your stones last longer if you use soap and water. So it depends. It depends on your budget and what you want to do. I'm going to go through a lot anyway, so I just do them dry. But yes, if you want them to last a little longer, you can put a little dab of oil on there and rub it back and forth. Or just like a little tiny little squirt like that and just see how the steel's coming off. The steel's already lifting off of the stone. You can see it. Um, what was that one stone? I don't even know if you remember this. This was like way back in the day. It was like an orange clay colored kind of stone and you put water on it and it like bled the color everywhere of the stone. Do you remember that? It was like a cheap Amazon stone. India, probably an India stone. Um, uh, now, when you use your paper towel, India stone is an uh, aluminum oxide stone. But when you use a paper towel on these, though, this is another thing. You'll get fibers all over. So now what you'll have to do is let it dry. Once it dries, wipe those fibers off because the fibers will be all over it. So you might want to find paper towel. Get good paper towels. That's one thing. But uh, other than that, you know, use a... Uh, you know certain types of cloths that work really good so this is going to be uh what is it i got one and quarter micron i could use my six right now but it really doesn't matter to me i'm just basically doing a burr removal i'm not polishing or anything Now, I like to do sometimes like a 3-2-1 pass and then start doing single passes. Not that big of a deal, but when you are freehanding and you're using the stone, not the not the strap, but the stone to deburr, then you might want to do stuff like that where you do what I call a 3-2-1 pass where you do like three passes on one side then you flip it over three passes on the other side flip it over two passes flip it over two passes then you go single passes one pass one pass one pass one pass because you're basically just fatiguing the burr dennis says those blue paper towels they sell in auto supply yeah, stores yeah, have yeah. less of a fiber yeah, problem yeah, yeah. is that because they wash the windows on the they're car mechanical they're mechanic uh but is that why is it for the windows or is uh, it just in general for mechanic I, stuff? I forget what they're made out of, but they have this fiber that runs in it that uh, hey man. keeps them a lot stronger. What up, man? I love a person's name where I don't have to say, hey, and then their name. I can just say their name and it says it all. Now everybody's going to come in with a hey, man. Well, you know, it's a lot. It's one less word that I have to say, and that's, you know. And we're going to have like 30 mans. The ultimate laziness. <laughs> Yeah, we should get some of those blue paper towels. That's what you need. Yeah, I've had them. Yeah, you have had them. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I know when you're done with a knife, you know that? Or getting what? close to done. Or what? getting in between stones. What? You like, I see you over there tapping it with your fingers, and then you're usually like making noises at it. <laughs> <laughs> make some sound? <laughs> yeah. Kind of like yeah. after you take a sip of my coffee, and you do that really low. Mm. <laughs> so right now what I'm doing with my finger to really feel i don't never leave your stones in your clamps especially if they're on a spring yeah Den uh i'm gonna say his name wrong denise, denise. says he said we still said it wrong when denise denise yeah okay when can i jump from one grit to a higher to be faster yesterday i jumped a grit and i couldn't get the finish i wanted so i went back and or now it's Denise. Good. Dennis? It's either Dennis or Denise. Well, I think it's like, I think this is from Poland. It's like Dennis, but like from there. So it's like, Dennis. Um, let me say this Dennis? really quick and then ask me, okay? Okay, okay so what I'm how I'm touching the edge Wait, right now. you're not answering the question? You're I'm not. I'm going to answer this really quick and then I'll oh, do okay, that. okay, okay. Okay, so when I'm touching the edge, feeling, what I'm basically doing is I'm very gently letting my, my skin touch it and 
you got to understand the motion. Like, I'm going to do it right here, and I'm going to do it dramatically. I'm touching it, and I'm dragging this way. Touching it, dragging this way. But I'm doing it ever so slightly. You can't even tell that's what I'm doing. Um, so I'm letting it touch, barely moving it, not enough to cut anything, just enough to let the teeth touch. So what I'm doing is I'm feeling for teeth. I take my nail. I run my nail up it, making sure there's no hiccups. I sh it should feel like I'm it's on glass right now. No bumps, no nicks, no nothing. Now, there could be a microscopic tooth or a microscopic chip or a microscopic anything that you can't even see under a magnifying glass, but you can feel it with your nail. That's why the nail trick is so effective. It should feel like what? Glass. He said nothing. it's like Dennis in English. That's so much easier. Just Dennis then. Or is it, is it Den, is it Deniz or Denise? Denise. No, Dennis. So it's just Dennis. I think so. What's up, Dennis? <laughs> All right, um, but another way I do it is I take my thumb. So I take my thumb and I do the same thing. So what you'll notice, you know, what you'll notice is I'll, oh, I'm going to do it dramatic again. I roll my thumb like that. I roll my thumb like this on the edge, but very gently remember that was dramatic i'm just letting it touch it and i can feel it hit the side of my thumb and i can tell where it's at now the next thing i'll rub my finger up this way like this and i'm making sure there's no jagged burrs that got stuck hanging over the side Burr. It's all nice and clean and everything is good. Now what's up, baby? You feel me? What's up, baby? That was a good joke. It was. Uh, l -l 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 when can I jump from one grit to a higher to be faster? Say that again. When can I jump from a higher? What? When, when can I jump from one grit to a higher grit to be faster? Yesterday I jumped a grit and I couldn't get the finish I wanted, so I went back and now it's good. Can you do that? Can you jump grits? You shouldn't, but you can. When, don't jump grits until you're really good. That's the thing. Like, I can jump grits because I know what grits I can jump. But you shouldn't try to jump grits because it's, you're just going to, this is the thing, is you are going to remove the exact amount of steel no matter what. Think about this, right? Like I, I said this before. If you were going to dig a hole, right, and you had a bobcat or a machine to dig the hole, you wouldn't, and say if it was a six foot hole, you wouldn't take two scoops with the with the bobcat and then finish the rest with your shovel. No, you do the whole thing with your bobcat and then clean the rest up with your shovel. So same thing with the stones. You want to make sure you're you're going to remove the exact same amount of material. So the the more aggressive stone is going to remove it the 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 larger amount faster than the finer stone so you don't want to jump to the finer stone hence the little shovel without removing and doing all the work with the course that's mm -hmm. why you're going through progression so because once you get past the first stone which is say the bobcat now you're just doing cleanup now you're just refining the edge so you can't jump to a thousand grit because the, the, the scratch pattern in the thousand grit stone is too fine. It's too little. It's like taking a teaspoon and trying to dig that, that you know, that, that hole. You don't want to do that. You, it's like trying to polish uh, the surface of a table with a cloth. You can't do it. You have to go through your grits in order for the polishing stone or your fine stone to even work. It won't even work because the grit in the, the, the scratch pattern that's on the edge is too abrased, like it's too aggressive. The, the scratches are too deep in order for a fine grit to even take it out. So you need another coarse stone and then a less coarse stone and then a less coarse stone. And what you're doing is you're removing the material, a, a large amount of it. And then eventually it's nice and flat and there's barely any scratches. And that's when you can use your finishing stone or finish there or whatever, depending on the grit you want to stop at. Yeah. What strop material are you using, or will you use? I have a lot of different stropping. Uh, I I have dozens of different strops. I like to use that non furry stuff, right? It depends, but with 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 the gunny juice, I 
I recommend getting a dense leather. So this is a dent. Let me show you the difference really quick. So this is a furry leather. You can see how it's like suede. This is a dense leather. There's no suede to it. It has no give either. It's yeah, it's like it's firm. So this one it has some squish. So this is the kind you want with gunny juice. And now you can use this kind if this is all you have. This works fine. Don't get me wrong. This is what you have. Use it. It's just fine. Um, but like this one technically is furry, and this one's dense. So it's not that big of a deal, but the dense stuff does work better, and I'm going to show you why right now. Um, make sure this is quarter. Oh. This is one micron. This is my one micron side. Now watch this. See that little squirt I put on there? I'm rubbing it around. It's already dry. It's already dry. See that? And see how I was able to massage it around? I'm able to put one squirt and bring it all the way across my strap. You want as thin of a layer as possible. Because you're going to reapply it. I'm going to reapply it, you know, once every couple uh, straps. Once every few straps. Now with this, watch this. See that? It doesn't. Now watch this. It doesn't spread. It literally just soaks in. Now I can't even spread it across my strap. It's just soaking in in one spot. And now I got to squirt more over here. And now I'm wasting the compound that would have been hyper effective on a strap like this. Now, this stuff's still really good. The furry stuff, I love the furry stuff. Technically, I love the furry stuff way more than I ever liked the dense stuff because this stuff accepted other strapping compounds better than the dense stuff. This stuff accepts the um the stuff that's like paste better. Like um like this stuff. Okay. It accepts this stuff better. So if you have this type of compound, come on, focus. If it if you have this type of compound, then you, I, I recommend the furry stuff. Not saying you have to have it, so if you already have this, it'll work. Um Basically, just any type of strap. But, like I said, if you are using the gunny juice, I recommend getting nano cloth, getting the dense uh, leather stuff, things like that. Just because it spreads so easy, it dries so fast, and it just works so good. What's up? Did I, did I tap you? I don't know. I don't think I did. Okay, so now we're going to talk about, um, really quick, because this is going to happen. Oh, wait. Yes. I do have something to I say. I knew it. I knew you did. But it's not a question. It's just a comment I want to make. Okay. You know, every time you do that bobcat analogy with, the, with your digging the whole thing. Yeah. Every single time you say that, and I'm fully aware that a bobcat is a machine. You think of a cat. I always think of you guys holding a giant cat on a leash and being like, dig! And it's like down there digging Meow. the hole. Yeah. No, I'm talking about like a backhoe. Or a I know. Machine. But I just, I wonder... If somebody else is yeah. like, why does he have a cat? There? Yeah, I like, I don't know if there, if every, like, country uses Bobcat as their kind of main brand. That's one of those, there's a word for that when you have a word that's a brand that is used so much synonymously with the object that people start using the brand as the word. For instance, Kleenex. Kleenex uh -huh. is a brand, not an item, but we say Kleenex for tissue because it's such a household name. That's how we do it with Bobcat. But so, anyway. So, so this is not this. It looks the same. It's not. Bad. This is a stone. This is like rubber. Oh, what the heck? It bends. This does not. It is rock hard. This is a rock. This is um, silicon carbide stone. Okay, you can use this for many different things. <laughs> you can use it as a, a stone cleaner, a sharpener, things like that. It's just like a stone. This looks like that. Come on, you fuck. Let me just zoom in so it can focus better. But this is basically like a, like a, a rubber sponge, kind of. This is a rust. Let me uh, find the camera. This is a rust remover. So, this is a rust remover. This is a rust remover. This is a rust remover. So, now, I've already applied a little bit of oil to this. This will, I'm not going to be able to get all this done in one time. But this is for you guys to have maybe a knife you're trying to repair 
maybe your grandpa's, maybe a kitchen knife, something like that. And if it only has a little tiny bit of pitting or a little tiny bit of dotting, then this will work the first time. Mine is very bad, as you can see. Lots of rust, right? Lots of rust. But what I'm going to do is I'm doing this in layers. And I'm taking my rust remover. I applied some 3-in-1 oil. Now, I just recently got some uh, KPL uh, stuff. I haven't tried it yet, but we'll talk about that in the future. I'm going to probably give some of that stuff to you guys. Cuba, what's up, brother? But this stuff, what I do is I apply a little drip drop. And I let it soak for about five minutes. The three-in-one means lubricates, penetrates, and cleans. And we are using this right now as the cleaner. Now, I'm going to use that KPL stuff and see how that stuff works for rust removal and stuff because KPL did send me a bunch. But basically, I'm, I already let it sit for a little bit. I'm letting it sit for about five minutes, and I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to... I'm not like really scrubbing hard. I'm just removing the top layer of what the 3-in-1 has removed. Because remember, it penetrates rust, right? Penetrates rust. So I, I let it penetrate it. Now I'm going to remove it. So I'm going to use this to kind of scratch some of the surface off. What the heck? I, I just have to say this while you're doing that really quick. Did you know that a brand name can actually legally lose its trademark by reaching a point where the product name is no longer differentiated and synonymous with the generic product? Because everybody else stole it? No, I did not know that Aspirin, Escalator, and Flip Phone lost their trademarks due to generic genericization. That's what it's called. So, like... Like Kleenex could, for instance, right? Because everyone says Kleenex for tissue, right? They can actually lose their trademark because it's so synonymous with the regular item that you can't trademark it then because that Even falls outside of trademark. Even trademark? Yeah. Because you have to keep, you, I think you have to reapply every so Yeah, often. You, all, you do. Every yeah, five so years, something like that. When they reapply, they can say, nah, this word is way too generic. It's like trademarking the color red, you know? That's crazy. I didn't know you could lose so, it, though. So, now that I've done that, I'm going to continue doing it. I'm going to do this. I might do this for a couple days. It might even take a week. But basically, I'm just going to continue to... Now, I could get it probably all done in one day if I keep doing it every five minutes. But I'm going to let this sit here again for a few minutes. And then I'm going to scrub it again and again and again and again. And I'm going to continue doing it until... The rust is removed and I'm down to basically metal because the, the stuff will penetrate it and lift off. Like if you notice, I'm already starting to get to some good stuff right here. Well, you probably can't tell right now, but I can see it. And I'm going to show you here in one second. Also, this stuff comes in a double pack. These ones are like four or five bucks. This is like $11 for these two. They come in a dual pack. And it's like eleven dollars for a medium and a fine. This one's this one's the fine. This one's the medium. So actually, right now I should be using this one. Bobcat was on that list when I was looking, by the way. <laughs> so apparently, other people noticed that one. What are you talking about? Dennis says that he worked in construction. And he said so he, he understood he, it. He said he wants one effing He-Man giant green cat, <laughs> like the Hulk. <laughs> Yeah, I, get, I try to use terms that everybody understands. Sometimes I use construction because it's the best that I understand. But um, I know, I, I try, like, try, that's why I said the table next, though. You know, like standing a table. I think people understand digging a hole. I know. Because you don't have to be construction to understand I understand that. I'm talking about the machine part. Oh, yeah. Well, whatever. That part doesn't really matter so much. Well, if I well, say I guess you're digging does. a hole, you Maybe get a bobcat. You could just say machine, though. Yeah. That's true. I bet Bobcat is all over the place, though, I would imagine. You hope. Except for probably in, like, North Korea. I don't think they probably have Bobcats. Although, they you'd be surprised, they man. They have, you go in countries like that, and all of a sudden, they have things you would never think that they would have. Like, the, the elite in North Korea, they drive all import cars. It's crazy. Yeah, that connection's rough.
This one's pretty severe, but um, this will eventually get it all the way down to basically tarnished metal. And then you could refinish it. I'm not trying to refinish this. I'm just trying to heal this. I want to keep it as natural as possible. This thing's like 100 years old. So I just want to save its life. And if you look at, remember, this was just as bad as this. And if you look at this spot, like it's doing pretty good. The tip is doing a lot better. Now when we get back here, I still have some work to do. But you can see this one's starting to look a lot better. And eventually it's just going to be like a, a blotch rather than rust. Because rust is like a disease to your metal. It will destroy your steel. How many people do we have in here? 74. Let's see. Shout out to all 74 of you guys. And people said nope. No rust. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Too much talking about bobcats on this live. Oh yeah, this is starting to really eat it away too. I can see the, you see the rust like going back and forth. You can really see it. Now this you can also use to kind of um, refinish. Like if you have some scratches and they're just like, you know, surface, like nothing like bad. You can get a, a, a coarse one, a medium one, and a fine one, and actually they polish the metal. If it's like, you know, scratched and stuff. Like not just on knives, but other things too. This is looking great. Man, it's looking so much better. Like, this stuff was so bad. Like, it was, like, growing rust. This is now, like, down to a point to where, um, I mean, I'm going to continue to do it, but. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. thanks for that, baby. Sorry, I didn't mean to click it. <laughs> now, there was one other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um. Do any of you guys not have any sort of sharpening systems, stones, or anything like that? You two should go into Chicago and check out a knife for me and see if it is a butt or pass. What knife? I haven't been to Chicago in a while. In a while. We should go back down there when it's warm out and not cold and snowing in April. Oh, I missed this. Sid said a green scotch brick pad can also be pretty good to loosen up some rust when applying oils. Yeah, that's kind of what this is. It's like a, an abrasive rubber. So do all of you, so all of you guys have sharpening systems then, right? Because that's, I just asked if any of you guys had, or did not have a sharpening device, stones or anything like that. So all of you guys have some sort of sharpening system, stones, etc. I'm just going to clean it really quick. Steve Yotter does not. Steve Yotter, is he a member? Yeah. What is Everybody's he, a member. I what does he not have? Uh, I assume whatever you asked. Well, so you don't have a sharpening system or a device or and a stone Sid or anything. And said he has stones, so I assume that means he doesn't have a system. So he has stones. What kind of stones do you have? Sid? Sid? 
Sid one. Sid one. What cool. kind of stones do you have? Or kid and one, maybe. Because it's CID. It could be kid. And the other it's one said Sid. no, right? The other one does not have yeah, nothing? Yeah, Steve Yotter just said, I don't. Steve Yotter. Uh, contact me on Instagram and send me your address. Now everyone's going to say, I don't have anything. <laughs> No, these guys are going to be honest. I know they will. Steve Yotter, I don't have anything. I'm looking at the one you have right now. If you have the money for the one I have, then yes, I recommend it. But you don't have to go this expensive. You can get a KME. So you told Steve to send you his, uh, what? his address on Instagram? If he um, doesn't have the money to get a stone, I can send him a diamond stone. Um, or something to start off with so he can at least start practicing. That doesn't mean he doesn't have to get another system or something. But he might have to get a stone holder. But we need to start getting these guys supplies so that they can start sharpening their edges. Or at least learning to tune them up or whatever. Alright, that's all I'm going to do for today on this, Sid. but I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-soak this in oil and let it penetrate, like, overnight. Sid replied about your question about the stones he has, because he has stones but not a system, and he has, I just got some generic stones in a 600 and 1200 diamond combo. Good job. That's good. That's great. That's a great combination. Uh, that, that's, as long as you have diamonds... Diamond plates are what you want. So as long as you have that, you're on a good path. He said he has, Steve said, I have the money to get one, but I wanted to see what's good and how to do it. Thank you, though. Yeah, then definitely get, if, you, if you're wanting a system like this, like the system we were just using, get that system or the KME. That KME is really good for the money. And you get diamond stones. You can use, you can get venives, you can get whatever type of stones you want. It's um, universal, so you can get different stones for it. Uh, I'm gonna set this right over here. But uh, but you want to uh, make sure you have diamonds though, because for the steels we use, guys, with our pocket knives, folding knives, even anything above a budget steel, you should be using diamonds. You should not be doing these stones. Like, okay, so like aluminum oxide stones, Arkansas stones, and all the stones, they work. Don't get me wrong, they work. But our st steels have carbides in them. And those are not hard enough to sharpen the carbides. Even if we're talking about some of the mid-grade steels, they might not be uh, riddled with carbides, but they still have a good amount of carbides in them. And the, the aluminum oxide stones are not going to be a Effective to those steels you need diamonds and uh, I've shown this in the lives where I show what the aluminum oxides and Arkansas stones are doing to your carbides they're not they're not sharpening them they're literally just taking the steel from around them leaving them there because they're not hard enough to do anything and then shattering them so um, as long as you have diamonds then then you're good to go and um. Yeah. Steve said, I'll reach out to you on Instagram and have you give me some ideas, though. I want to get something and see if my eight-year-old gets into the hobby. That'd be oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Let me just uh, grab a book really quick because we still need to test this edge. Really I think quick. kids that age, especially if it's, a, if it's a son that we're talking about and not a daughter. Well, either way, really, they'll get into whatever... Like, if they're, they're still that age where they think, you know, mom and dad are cool. So, especially dad. Dads stay cool longer than moms do. So, it's like, Dads you know, stay cool They do. Than Let's true. be real. It's they true. do. Dad we is do. always going to stay cool. We and they're always going to want to do what cool. dad does. So, you can usually get kids into a hobby just for that reason alone. Because they want to do what you're doing. Very, very keen. And that is just a medium grit edge. That's not a fine edge. That is just a medium grit edge. Very, very sharp. Now, I still think, though, <laughs> if you guys are getting systems, right? If you guys are getting systems and you get good at a system, 
right? And I think that this is something that this uh, this membership can definitely help. If you're really good at a system, well, then when we do these and we do live sharpenings, if you're sharpening along or if you're not sharpening along, you know, maybe on your own time or, you know, you can watch it later, work on freehanding, all right? And I say that because freehanding is so rewarding, but that's not even the reason why, because, you know, if you don't give a shit about the reward from it, but besides that, it's beneficial in the field, it's beneficial at home. Like, there's so many times where you don't need to put your knife on your system, and you'd be surprised with how easily you could just tune your edge up really quick freehanding, and you don't have to remove a bunch of steel, like, from honing to stropping to um, even using, like, the, the little work sharp um, um, field sharpener, right? Like, you're at the field, you're at work, maybe you're out hunting, something like that. Like, having the ability to do it is very important. It's okay that you have a system. That's good. And you can use the system all you want. But that doesn't take away from the fact that you should still be learning as much as possible about doing it by hand. It's kind of like kind of like this, right? Just because a construction worker has a nail gun doesn't mean he doesn't know how to run a manual hammer, right? Just because you have a drill doesn't mean you don't know how to use a screwdriver. You should still learn as much as possible by doing it freehand and with the system. Learn both. Both are beneficial in different ways. Like, I use both all the time. Sometimes I freehand, sometimes I use this. Sometimes I literally get knives that are easier to freehand than use the system, and vice versa. There's times I get a knife in for sharpening, and the system is like, oh, that'd be so much easier right now. Then there's times I get a knife, and it's like, well, I ain't using the system on this. You know, it'd just be so much easier for me to freehand it. So... It, it, and like I said, it's very rewarding when you can look at the knife, even if you're using a system, and you can look at it and be like, "Yeah, that's my edge," you know. And when you can get to the when you get to the point, because I know a lot of you, your edges are not lasting as long as the factory edges, and then some of you have realized that man, these these uh, new edges last way longer than factory edges, and you want to get to that point. You want to get to the point to where your your edges are lasting twice as long as the factory edge what's up baby um not a question but a comment that i just want to read sid once said freehanding is so relaxing and therapeutic also i love to sit and sharpen my knives from my collection would you agree oh yeah i i got the therapeutic part oh it's so therapeutic never mind is it focusing i don't think it's focusing yeah and then blazing edc said i I agree, and I just zone out, and it's almost meditative. I can't get it to focus. I don't know why. I can see that. Let me go like this now. My hand's a little more still. I didn't put a high angle on it. The reason why is... uh. One, this is a good angle. This is right around 17 degrees. I could have brought it a little bit lower. Um, actually, it's a little bit higher than 17. It's like almost 18 degrees. It was like 17.9 or something. Now, my next edge, because remember, this is my first edge on this. And um, I have a lot of testing to do. I've already tested the factory edge. Um, so, And I've been using the hell out of this thing. So I know I'm going to wind up resharpening it again resharpening it again soon so my next edge will probably be 15 degrees per side um maybe maybe not that low we'll see we'll see because i'm gonna see how this edge does because if this edge does really good and i don't need to go that low and this cuts great then i'll use it but i definitely could tell i wanted a little bit lower angle than what was on there it was probably 22.5 degrees now it's right around 18 degrees so it's just a little tiny bit bigger than it once was so, um, yeah, and I, I might just leave it. Uh, we'll see what happens. But it, it's good to have. You would be surprised with if you have a knife that's not cutting very good and you're not happy with that knife, you would be so surprised with just how, how much changing the angle does for that knife. It will go from your a knife you don't like to use to a knife you love using. 
Yes, baby. Um, this this Bees a, Blades! Shout out to Bees Blades! What's up, baby? This was just a reply to somebody else, but I just wanted to comment on it. Dennis said, I have the same feelings with my system. I'm a bit afraid to start freehanding. You should, uh, you should just get, like, a $20 knife with some not crap steel, something still usable, obviously, because I don't think it's really probably good to practice on, like, stainless, like, crap crap, right? No. Yeah, like, you know, like a, like a Ganzo or something, and then just... I always recommend Civivis. Civ well, yeah, but they don't want to mess them up if they like them, is the thing. You know what I mean? Like, there's that fear of, like... Cut. Yeah, like something cheaper that still has a reliable enough steel that the sharpening is The thing is, is you up. will always have that fear. If you have, a, if you have a system, right? If you have a system, then if you're good at the system, then if you fuck it up with freehanding, you can just put it on the system, right? So, don't worry about fucking it up. Obviously, do a budget knife, something that is replaceable. But, start off with a high angle. Then, if you do mess it up, you can always go to the system and do a lower angle and fix it, right? Uh, it's always fixable. Just remember that. It's always fixable. It's just a knife. It's just a tool. Don't use an expensive one. It's just a knife. Fucking, it, the reward you will get from the work you put into a budget knife, learning how to sharpen it, is going to be worth way more than that knife. So just know that. And like I said, don't 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 stress yourself out about it. Have fun, right? Have fun. Go about it with a smile on your face. And it's a learning process, and that's okay. And if you do fuck up, that's okay. You know, we can get it fixed. It's not a problem. Um, but, uh, it's about getting the muscle memory down. Absolutely, Steve. That is the biggest thing. And that's why you got to do it. And that's the thing. That's why you just kind of got to do it because you'll never get to a point to where you're like, I'm, I'm good to go now. What makes you good to go is the muscle memory is putting it across the stone, feeling how the stone feels, feeling how this angle feels. Um, uh, I've shown you guys the trick with my thumb, right? And you guys can always get these. Get one of these, and what you can do is you can get your stone, get one of these. It's just a little angle, guys. That way you can, take so much. that way you can lay it right on the stone, and you can, that's right there is 23 degrees, right? That's a 23 degree angle. They have different angles, different sizes. You just lay it right there, and now I just have to hold that angle now across the stone to the tip. And then when I'm done with that side, I just flip it over to this side and do this side. That's a high angle than what's already on here. But you see what I mean. Now i got to resharpen my knife. Um, this, this is my TRN. I needed to sharpen it anyway, so not a big deal. But, yeah, it's not a big deal. Right? It's not a big deal. You're not going to ruin your knife. The worst thing you're going to have to do is resharpen it. Right? So, you can get these angle guides. These angle guides actually are really good, man. They're like two, three bucks. So, you can get multiples of them. Different angles, whatever. And they work great. So, I would recommend one of those. And then also, the, you have the Work Sharp Field Sharpener. That works really good. It's already got the angles already in it or on it. If you guys, whoever's in this chat, if you haven't gotten a Work Sharp Field Sharpener yet, get one. Um, I link them all the time in the videos. Um, Kara's going to link one right now. Yeah. And um, am I linking a field the Work Sharp Field Sharpener. And the reason why is one you you can use it for so many things so many things you can do serrations on it you can hone on it you can do full-blown sharpenings on it you can tune up your edge it has a strap you can put it in your truck you can put it in your glove box you can have multiples of them um it can help you learn how to hold an angle um you can sharpen your friend's knife when you're out you know out this, on the town um uh, yeah right there this yeah Make sure that's the most affordable one. It they was. Have. They okay. were both the same. I looked. They're thirty bucks. The rod moves. I should just grab mine. Um, right here, this thing. I'm trying to be faster than the mods because they always move right. so quick. So <laughs> this has the angles already on it. You have the angle for the rod. Let me grab this knife. So here's the honing rod. You have an angle already on there. See this? 
the angle is already on there. You can you can spin this, which spins the ceramic, and changes um, how aggressive it is. You have the angles on the diamond stones, 20 degrees. It has replaceable plates. And it has a strop on it. Um, it has this four serrations. The, this is such a versatile little tool. It even has something where you can you can put uh, right there. That's four, so you can um, you can work on um, uh, heads for arrows if you're a hunter, or if you like to bow shoot. So you can put your knocks on and stuff, um, or not knocks. So you can uh, so you can glue. Or what is it for? It's not for sharpening the heads. It's for something else. Um, I forget exactly what it's for, but it's, it's, I think it's still, you can hold your arrows maybe to, to, to put them on the, the, um, so you can put the arrow in there and then you can put it on, um, the, the arrow. Now, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah. You can, uh, on the other side, you can store your weed in there. I don't smoke weed, but you guys probably do. See? And stash your weed in there. Um, but yeah, it's such a versatile little tool and it, it, I, I can't recommend these enough. This is my most recommended thing for sharpening. Like I said, whether you freehand, whether you have a fixed angle system, everybody should have one of these. I don't care who you are. You should have one. Everybody should have one. You can literally full blown sharpen a knife with little to no skill. You already have the angle here. And like, let's say. Your angle that you have on your knife is not 20 degrees. Let's say it's like 17 degrees. Okay, well, this is 20 degrees. All I have to do is pay attention to this and where to set my, my angle, and I can do 17 degrees. That's one thing I've never taught you guys on this thing. You can do 17 degrees on this. You just have to focus on where to lay it for it to be a 17 degree angle. Now, it doesn't say that on there. But you have to kind of feel for it and know right where it's at. Like this is 20. So this is probably 18. That's 17 right there. That's about 17 degrees right there. All I did was I just worked my edge from right here to right there. But yeah, it works great though. And then you have the strap, man. It has a weed compartment it has, sold. It has a weed compartment, yeah. So, there you guys go. We're going to end this. Now, listen. About 30 minutes, I'm going to finish this video. This uh, give or not give, What am I saying? This knife sale. Patrons, Tuesday. The, um, your guys' uh, entry video for the giveaway will be up. As soon as I get the plaque, we're doing the 100,000 giveaway on the channel. And then for the, um, the Bang Squad members, think about things you guys want to, for me to give away on here. And make sure you guys message me about it or name them. I already had somebody that was willing to donate a workshop for you guys. And I was going to donate some attachments for it. But we're going to get some stuff for you guys so I can give you guys some stuff. So let me know things that uh, you guys think would be great giveaways. I think these would be great giveaways. So I'll probably buy some of those for you guys. But we're going to figure it out. Um, I appreciate you guys supporting and joining the Bang Gang Squad, we'll be doing this again in two weeks. I am planning on doing little, tiny, short uploads for you guys, too, that are only for the members. Like, maybe two, three-minute videos of things that, like, when I'm doing something, when I'm in the process of doing something, I can film it and show it to you guys. But that's about it, guys. I love you guys. Thank you guys for all the support. Peace!